Hey, what's going on YouTube? Kurosama here. And today we are taking a look at this beat up box from uh, yesteryear, the uh, Dragon Momoko MG Testament. Pretty bold of them to like put, I don't, I don't know if this is like the actual model number of the mobile suit, but to say mobile suit and then it has like Testament, I mean, that's probably why they went under for a while and then, you know, rebirth and all that shit. But um, anyways, you know, for one, I would like, I'm not thanking <laughs> New Type HQ for giving me this kit uh, because they do not sell these, you know, knockoff, third party, whatever you want to call them, uh, type of kits. They do sell resin and all that and conversions, but they sell actual, like, you know, Bandai and Kotobuki and things like that. So, first party. Uh, so if you want to check them out, go to NewTypeHQ.com, use that promo code KROSAMA, so that way you can get 10% off. And, yeah, you, you can't get a testament, but you can get something else. Now, something to note is that this did come out in 2017, and I think the price tag at the time was around, like, 55 maybe $60? Not really too sure, but finding it now, I mean, I think it's a lot more than that. Just because, you know, Dragon Moko isn't really around anymore, and they only made a certain, you know, number of these. So, finding this particular kit is going to be a hassle. So, don't really know what to tell you, except for rely on eBay or, you know, some third-party sellers. Now, looking at this box and how beat up it is, um, yeah, this did not happen uh, whenever I got it in the mail, like, many, many moons ago. This actually happened when I moved from Mississippi to Japan. Um, it just, you know, they, they beat the fuck out of my boxes, and uh, this is the result. So I actually never opened this box, and I don't know how the contents on the inside are looking. Uh, so we'll take a look. So first we're taking a look at the front cover art. I mean, it looks good. I mean, obviously this is just a, uh, you know, the model itself. Don't, I'm not too sure if this is actually a 3D rendering of the model, if this is the model with just a white backdrop or whatnot, but yeah, I mean, it looks good. I, I don't, I don't think it looks bad whatsoever. Then we take a look on the side of the box. You're just going to see like, you know, the little front and rear shots. You're going to see some nice little action shots. It is going to come with some like nice little revolvers, like beam revolvers. Looks really good. And then you're going to have that nice claw backpack. I mean, a lot of what I'm saying is juicy. Um, uh, I really wanted to paint this model, but honestly, I'm, I'm pretty content with just building it and then do some like detail painting. And on this side, you see a truly beat up box, uh, but another front and rear shot. And then you just kind of getting some of the little details in there and you get more of the weapons. So there's like the little claw gimmick. It, it looks good. I don't have any problems with it. So we'll take a look. So with opening it up, the, I don't know, this like sticker sheet was on top. I, I'm pretty sure this is just for runners. So if you want to like label something, the runner numbers, I, I guess you can. But for the most part, I really, I don't know. That's whatever. And the packaging for the most part isn't horrible. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty average for what you see with the uh, third party stuff. So not really seeing anything like crazy. All the packaging seems to be fine and none of the parts seem to be like really broken. Now starting with runner A, you are gonna get a pretty dark maroon color. Overall, the details are pretty nice and the quality of the plastic, it really feels good. Surprisingly enough, this feels pretty sturdy. Like I don't see any kind of like flashes of plastic and it, it, it doesn't look nasty. It actually has really great uh, gate placement. I don't know, I, I, I think this is pretty cool looking. This is a really good, kind of like introduction to um, you know what I'm about to get into. Because a lot of people are saying, hey, this is gonna be pretty bad. So uh, I've already built a few third parties. I made it work, you know, you just gotta trim off some of the peg and you know, just kind of you know work with the fitting issues. But otherwise, this is pretty damn nice. And next we have is runner B1. Uh, it's really not as bright on camera uh, as it is in real life. It's a little bit, a little bit toned down, uh, but the details are really good. There's gonna be the, the, the front chest plate right here, and you just got other little random red parts. So, look pretty good. And next is gonna be runner B2, so it's gonna be the same color as runner A1. Once again, some really good surface details and pretty good gate placement. And next is gonna be runner B3, so just a couple of parts. I, I'm guessing that's for the backpack, but looks pretty good. You got some like little vents right there and just some good little surface detail. Next is going to be runner C1. This is going to be a really nice, vibrant yellow. Um, just going to be bits, and you got the V-fin right here. Looks pretty good, uh, so not really any issues. And this is going to be runner C2. This is just going to be some clear green, so you got some parts. I think this is the uh, eyes. Yeah, so you got parts for the eyes and just like the head camera and such. 
this would be really good to paint, I would say, because although it's really nice looking right here, uh, you're definitely gonna have to like paint some of the black around the eyes, and I would just probably recommend painting just over it, or maybe even under it if you can. Looks like you can, so maybe some silver right underneath there would be pretty, you know, well off. And that's gonna be runner D1, this is gonna be your black parts. So the runner is gonna be more glossy, I would say. So it's not really a bad thing. Um, I'll just, you know, if you wanna tone it down, just make sure you use a, a matte top coat. I think that's the route I'm gonna go. I'm, like, I'm probably not gonna paint any of this, uh, do some detail painting, but I will be using a matte coat. And next we have is runner F1. This is gonna be your inner frame. Um, it has like a brownish gray tone to it. Uh, but it looks good. I mean, I really don't have any issues with it. It has like some nice, some nice inner frame detail if you look underneath, um, especially like right, just right here underneath the uh, actual front skirts or back skirts, whatever that is. You got the little backpack right there, which has some decent detail. Uh, overall though, pretty impressed about all this. And here we're gonna have two runner G1s. Um, just gonna be more of the inner frame. Looks pretty good overall. Runner H1, more inner frame parts. So some of this looks like it's gonna be a little bit more um, external. So even though a lot of this is gonna be, you know, just joints and all that, uh, still you're gonna see a little bit of this surfacing, uh, you know, protruding through the armor. Uh, but it looks pretty good. I think this is gonna be for like the, the backpack. But yeah, I, I like it. Runner I2 is gonna be some silver parts. Uh, looks like it's just gonna be for the claws right here. And you got some other little silver bits. But uh, yeah, looks really good. And you're gonna have two runner J1s, just this J1 right here is gonna have a little extra, you know, slide of bits over here. It looks like it's just gonna be for the uh, the skirts and yeah, pretty much just the waist parts. Uh, but the red looks really good. It is gonna have some nice detail on the inside of some of this. So I don't know how well you can see that, but uh, just some of these bits are gonna have a little bit of you know, surface detail. So you can run probably some brown or if you wanna, you know, throw some black panel lining on that. It's gonna look pretty good. I might go the brown route though, just I think it contrasts a little bit better with the red. Uh, but yeah, some of this is going to be uh, really good for panel lining. And next is gonna be runner K2, more silver parts. So looks really good. I honestly really like this uh, tone of silver that they use. Uh, it's kind of like um, I don't know. It looks it looks like it has that metal like tone to it. Uh, maybe just brush some you know dry brushing on it might bring it out a little bit more. Uh, but if not, you can definitely paint it if you think this is not to your liking. And runner L1 is gonna be some of the blade bits. Looks pretty good. Um, no, I don't I don't really see fitting issues. Like every time I look at this, uh, look at any of these runners and look at these parts, I mean, these things look like they're really well made and well crafted. So uh, I'm not really expecting something that's gonna be a letdown to be honest. And here we have two runner L2s. This is gonna be for your little revolver right here with the little like nice bayonet on the bottom. I'm actually looking forward to this weapon. This weapon looks like pretty damn cool. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Just some more uh, silver bits. Runner XB is just gonna be some uh, inner frame bits for like the, looks like the waist as well as the chest. And you're gonna have this runner, it's just gonna be for the hands. And this runner is just gonna be the back of the hands. And also what's interesting is that you get these little posable like 2.0 or it might be the 3.0 hands. Um, that's actually pretty interesting because I didn't think that this kid was going to come with that. Probably not going to use them. Uh, I might just cut them out and see if I can use them. But I'm not too you know keen on these style of hands. And you get two polycap sheets, two beam sabers, a horrible sticker sheet. Oh my god, this is horrible. I know it kind of looks good because like the little metallic look to it. Um, but honestly, all this can be painted, you know, the little eyes and everything. Yeah, I I'm just gonna paint all that. And you also get this water slide sheet. It has like a pr protective film over it. Um, so it's a little bit hard to see, but you know, you got all your basic caution signs and everything. Uh, some other little detail stuff. So more likely gonna use this just because it, it came with the kit and might as well use it to my advantage. So yeah. Hey, we're looking at the manual. This kit, like just on the front of the manual, obviously this is like all painted and detailed up. Uh, but this looks so, so good. Um, really excited to see how this is gonna look on the shelf. Uh, but taking a look at the manual, so we're just gonna get some more like, you know, little screenshots and all that of, uh, of this kit looking so menacing. Oh my God, the thing looks crazy amazing. Um, really excited to see this in action. And then you just you know, open it up and the instructions are pretty straightforward. I mean, this. This could actually like almost be a Bandai manual, just the way it looks. Um, honestly, I think it's well, well constructed. So I don't know, man, like this, I don't see this being too much of a fitting issue, but people are saying it is. Um, then you come over here and you got all your you know, water slides and everything. That's pretty much it. I mean, damn, is it really that short? 
can't be that short, can it? Oh no, okay. So there's a little bit more right here. Yeah, so you're just getting some more, little nice shots. Oh, that looks good. Some little details, that looks stupid. <laughs> um, but yeah, you got some really nice shots in here and oh, I'm, I'm just excited, man. Really, really hyped to, uh, to build this, to be honest. But that's all from me, guys, so thank you all for watching. Um, I should get this kit hopefully built by next weekend, but I am in the process of painting the MG Barbatos, and I want to put a lot of work into that because I, I want to build it and complete it and put it on the shelf before I leave on the 17th of January. But uh, with this, I should get it done before the 17th as well, since it's pretty much a straight build with just some extra little details. Um, but that's it for me, guys. Definitely thank you for watching, and stay tuned for some of this. And for some of you who are probably going to ask, am I going to live stream this? I just might. I uh, don't know which days, but if I do have time, uh, I'll give you an hour and, you know, we can definitely, uh, you know, watch the construction of this and, you know, watch me build it. But that's it for me, guys. Thank you all for watching and I'll be seeing you all in the next video. Bye-bye. Woo! All right. All done, Steve. What? You're not done. The hell you mean I'm not done? You still got questions to answer. Ah, oh, shit. You're right. That's the new thing I was going to implement, huh? All right, well, since we got time at the end of the video, let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so this first question comes from Forge Horizons. Why is the color accuracy so shit? Um, referring to the Asuna Figure Eye Standard. Uh, because Bandai, you know, pretty much deemed it that way. What do you think, Steve? Look, I don't care what you bastards say. Asuna is a goddamn golden girl. Revan Rushardi asks, better hand-painted or airbrushed? Um, honestly, I prefer to airbrush just because it's a little bit easier for me. Uh, but hand painting like small details is actually pretty cool too. Um, but yeah. Ozzy Danger asks, so compared to the awesome Kotobukiya kits, which I gave a 10 out of 10, what would you give this? Uh, once again, the Asuna figure. Um, in terms of scoring, I would probably give it a 4. Nah, that's too low. Let's go with a... Uh, Let's go with a solid 6.7 out of 10. I think that's, that's pretty fair. What about you, Steve? What the hell did I say earlier? She's a goddamn golden girl. That's a 10 out of 10 right there, buddy. Your standards are just pretty much all over the place, it seems. Henry Sherwood asks, have you watched Mecha Gaikotsu? He just asks, what is your opinion about the Massacre Gunner Zaku Warrior Luna Maria Hawk design? Um, that's the blue one, right? If this is the blue one, I think it's, uh, it's pretty goddamn cool. My fi, my fu you, my fu you, uh, asks, do you still work on the Char Month build you wanted to do? And if yes, can you give us an update and maybe review it once it's done? That thing is in, uh, it's in probably work in progress hell right now. Eventually I'm gonna get it done, but, um, honestly, man, I don't know. Let me get this, let me get the MG Barbatos done. After that, then we'll talk. Hey, and lastly, RD Blancas asks, why does your voice sound like Duke Nukem, Steve? The better question is, why does Duke Nukem have my voice? I don't know. You, you came after Duke Nukem. The fuck did you say to me, Crow? All right, all right, I'm just going to leave that one. All right, but hey, that's it for me, guys. So if you do want to submit any questions, statements, whatever, um, just post it in the comment section below. I, I'll have like a little comment that says, hey, post all your questions and things there. And at the end of whatever next video I come up with, I'll go ahead and uh, review them. So, hey, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye. We need a goddamn intro and outro of this segment. Fuck, like, something. Like, naked robots dancing or something. Fuck, maybe, maybe I can make it happen.